as Abraham Lincoln type guy is he? You know, is he still with you? Oh yeah, yeah, he's he's walking with me. We're walking down the hallway. Well, is he in front of you? Is he next to you? Is he behind you? Where is he? You know, oh, he's in front of me. I said, well, if he's in front of you, can you see his stovepipe hat? Silence. No, I don't see his his hat. Well, did you see his hair? No, I don't see his hair. Hair. <clears throat> And she said, I don't think he looks like Lincoln. I think I was, no, he doesn't look like Lincoln. <laughs> That's a resolution of the situation done by the abductee himself, even though I, even though I did not say a single word about it not being the Lincoln. Yeah. Uh, and that's what happens when people take conscious recollections at face value, and that's where you get a thousand different kinds of aliens visiting. Mm. Now, here's the counter-argument, Henrik. Yeah. Here comes the counter the counter argument is, and I, nobody knows this argument, only me. I am the one true person in the world that knows this argument. <laughs> so, therefore, I am automatically wrong. <laughs> but here is the argument. You can make an argument that we are alone in the universe, that only Earth has intelligent evolutionary technological life technologically based civilization life. You can make that argument. It is, in my opinion, a stupid argument, but it is a legitimate academic argument. The combination of events that happened on Earth was so unusual and so rare that it has never been repeated anywhere else, and life evolved in the way it did because of that. It's, 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 it's stupid because it presumes that life can only evolve in the way it did uh, it, uh, here and can't evolve in different ways other places. It's a stupid argument, but um, but it's a legitimate argument. You cannot make an argument for two. Only us and the aliens who are abducting us evolved in the entire universe, uh, and uh, uh, and there's no other life out there. You can't. That's that is an unsustainable argument. It is not an academically viable argument whatsoever. If there are two, there are two trillion automatically. Mm -hmm. You can't have two. Two is ridiculous. There's got to be two billion or two million or whatever it is. There's got to be life all over the universe if there are two. Mm -hmm. That's the argument. It's probably wrong, but that is, I think, a even though it's almost counterintuitive it's a strong argument i like that argument therefore i don't know who other people are who's not abducting people maybe people are seeing beings who are not abducting may who knows i don't know right. all i know is that every single person who's had abduction experiences who i've worked at and who my uh, colleague bud hopkins have worked at worked with and bud and yvonne smith and and john Carp, they all see the same beings all the time and nobody else hmm. and uh, so that that's the best I can do in terms of, in terms of of, of how many other a, a, aliens there are is, and all yeah. of that stuff. Yeah. So, so so there 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 we there we have it, and then <laughs> that's your oh work. I know what I was saying. Yeah. Wait, oh, wait, I did, I was fin let me finish my argument. I forgot. Yeah. The DNA. Uh, yeah, that's right. It's, okay. Right. It's strongest with the with the ones that look insect like. It's <clears throat> slightly less with the taller gray aliens. It's less with the smaller gray aliens. It is less with hybrids. It's it, you can people say can, can tell a difference in how they're being uh, in when they're being stared at in these uh, in these uh, 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 neural en engagement procedures. They 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 can tell it's much less. And when they see hybrids on the ground, ones who really look human, it's much less. And they can tell that. There's much less strength to it. It doesn't matter. It's still there, mm -hmm. and we can't do it. So, so the answer is: Is it watered down a little bit? Yeah, it is because they're mainly human. But, uh, but even a little bit is catastrophic. <laughs> you know, it's like people tell me, "Oh, I'm telepathic. I can tell what's happening in people's minds and all the rest of that stuff," and they're not abductees. Let's just say. And the answer to that is, if telepathy was even a minor part of the human condition, if a small number of people could 
let's just say 1%, 90, let's just say a half a percent of people were telepathic and they could tell what was going on in other people's minds to a great degree of certainty and accuracy. We'd live in a different society. Yeah. The ripple effect from that would be mind-boggling. Hmm. The, the, the world we live in would not, would not, be, would not be recognizable to us. Hmm. If just a small number of people were truly te telepathic. Yeah. And it's the same thing with this situation. If just a few, if there's just a, a small number of people who can control us a little bit, that's all you need. That's all, that's you, all need. you need. Yeah, that's true. And, and so in, in regards to this now then, if, if this is where your research has led you, so to speak, um, in terms of other plans in a way here, I mean, can we find out where some of these hybrids live? You mentioned the, the scenario, for instance, where they put all the furniture wrong, etc. That, that that means that people are going to these to to their houses somewhere and so forth. Is this is something correct. could that could be tracked down? Where do they live? Who are these people? Can can we bring this in from the memory, so to speak, of an abductee into the real life, where we really go and investigate? Who, who you know? Who are these uh, uh, people in one sense? Uh, is that a possible way of, of finding more information, fi finding out more information here? Yes, that is. Now I have to be very, very, very careful with what I say. <clears throat> There's always a possibility that I'm wrong. And if you go to somebody's house, knock on that door and see if you're going to be affected or not, uh, or see if, you know, if you <laughs> see who these people are and they answer the door and you they say, are you a hybrid? Or, you know, and the next thing you know, the police show up and they and take you away and you're on, and 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 put you in a psychiatric ward. Yeah. Um, the the fact is is that it's a lot trickier than that. Sure. You have to have it's a money question. You have to have people who will have equipment, video equipment, sound equipment, uh, who can be far enough away from them and yet have a clear pathway, visual pathway who have a truck or van or whatever it is, like the FBI or, mm. or, or whatever police facility is available, who can focus in without any abductees even knowing that it's happening, because if an abductee knows, then these beings are going to know. Right. And then you'd have to see people coming in and out of the house who are just average-looking people. And then you'd have to have a way of testing whether or not that they're abductee, whether or not that they're hybrids. And if you go and ask them, you will be convinced immediately that, no, they're not hybrids. They're just regular people. <laughs> <laughs> See what you mean? Yeah. Huh. But the answer is yes. The answer is still yes. And these are minor problems that can be worked out. And uh, this is uh, a very fruitful area. And this is the way to go. And this is something that uh, uh, people who have... Uh, strong wills, strong hearts, and and strong minds, and strong wallets uh, <laughs> can. This is an area that that is uh, that is something that is to be looked at. Yes. This well, is, one thing this is awesome. uh, as well, David, that, that I thought about is if if abductees are regularly um, uh, taken, so to speak, uh, and and whatever it is uh, coming into their rooms and so forth. And if this is prolonged throughout life and, and through generations and so forth, uh, again, that idea of, of installing, as you mentioned before, like uh, cameras, web cameras, monitor rooms, monitor an entire house where, where these people are. Is that a possibility? Have that been done and failed or, or what? That's been done. done. It's been done? Yeah, that, that was the first thing that we did in terms of uh, putting up cameras uh, in people's bedrooms. Uh, I started that in 1986. Mm. Um, with the very first, with Melissa, the very first, first person I worked with, uh, I I I I, bought, I ran out, bought a video camera, and she told me she was being abducted the three days in a row. I uh, went to her apartment, I stuck it on a dresser, pointed it at her bed. Uh, this was, of course, before uh, uh, computers and all that. I mean, before DVDs and everything. And um, I ha gave her some tapes, and I said, you know, let's uh, let's just just. You know, put the thing on it when you go to bed at night, taping your bed, taping, and uh, if it happens at night, uh, you'll be in one place at least. We know where to point it, and uh, and don't don't even look at the tape afterwards. Just take it out, put another one in the next day, and I'll collect them. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, what would happen was um, there was no, nothing happened, nothing happened. Then she'd say to herself, 
you know, nothing.